Hi guys and welcome to Tech Team GB. This is the early 2018 build guide and this is actually a pretty interesting time to build a PC. Of course, with DDR4 prices and especially graphics card prices being pretty high, this might not be the best time uh, in terms of straight value for money to build a PC, but if you're interested and you're desperate to have a new system, whether you're new to the gaming PC scene or you're upgrading, here's a bit of a sort of uh, kind of platform guide and a bit of a almost blueprint as to kind of the, the main things that I would definitely recommend right now and the things that you have some options in depending on what prices you can get the parts for. So I want to clarify, as with all build guides, this is not a hard and fast, you must buy these parts. This is a sort of blueprint and just my kind of approximation for the, the platform that I would recommend if you're on the sort of budget that we're currently looking at. And obviously, as I said, we do have a couple of different options for stuff like RAM and graphics cards, which currently are seeing a pretty high influx in prices versus even a couple months ago. So I want to make it clear that this system that I'm currently building with a couple of slight alterations, depending on where you're buying it and just the hard drive that I physically have have available here. Um, the, the price for the system, if you're buying it on Amazon, is £1,007 as I have it spec'd here. Uh, and from Overclocked UK, it's £1,054. But uh, it's like different part selection and stuff like that. You end up with an M.2 SSD from Overclockers as opposed to a standard SATA from this one. And a more optimized version of this build with 8 gigs of RAM and a 1060 as opposed to an RX 580 on Amazon is £856. And on uh, Overclocked UK is £900. Eight. Again, slightly different uh, hard drive and storage configuration, but uh, that is obviously a fairly decent price point and still not too bad, especially when it comes to the, the spec of system you end up getting, the performance you end up getting, and overall just experience. So to run down the parts that we're going to be using for this build, the first thing and the main thing that I'm generally recommending as a whole is the Ryzen 5 1600. It's generally regarded as the best value for money chip, especially in the Ryzen 5 category that you can get right now. It prefers performs excellently in gaming, in streaming, and in other productivity and more sort of workload uh, or kind of workstation based applications and even stuff like video editing does a really good job of as well. So that's a really nice one. Of course, just running one graphics card in this build, I'm recommending a B350 board. Now I do have a B350 Prime from ASUS here, which is a little bit cheaper. So if you want to pick that one up instead of the board that I'll be using just for simplicity because it's already out of its box and ready to be out have everything installed in, the MSI B350 Tomahawk. Uh, you can pick up either one of these and they're fairly similarly priced, although the ASUS one is a little bit cheaper while still providing pretty similar feature sets. In terms of cooling, we're just going to use the stock Aspire cooler that comes with the 1600, attaching it to the standard brackets on the motherboard. In terms of the SSD, I'm going to be using the Drevo uh, X1 SSD, it's the 256 gig SSD, uh, with what should be a one or two terabyte hard drive, depending on the, your configuration, although just because of what I have available to hand here. It's a six terabyte red drive, but don't worry too much about that. Um, if, if you go for the Overclockers UK bundles, they have a WD, uh, uh, I think it's 120 gig M.2 SSD with a one terabyte blue drive as a bundle right now. So feel free to take a look at those for your storage configurations. And once again, because of the stock availability uh, at ASUS, I have an RX 580 as opposed to something like a 1060. And uh, we're gonna be using this one. Obviously it's a very nice card, still performs excellent. Uh, just obviously in terms of pricing and stock availability it's pretty limited thanks to its uh, pretty high effectiveness at Bitcoin mining but either way that's the, the card we're using. And in terms of the case we'll be using the BitPhoenix Enzo. This is actually a case I'm going to be giving away in the, at the end of this video so feel free to uh, take a look at the giveaway link that will be in the description down below if you want to enter that and thank you to Overclose UK for a supplying the case for the review in the first place and for shipping it out to uh, unfortunately going to be UK winners but still a winner nonetheless. The other thing that I should mention is that there are new Ryzen chips coming out in the next couple of months. So if you do want to hold off and you you know you already have a system and you're just kind of thinking about upgrading right now, I would probably recommend holding off uh, just a little bit longer to check out the newer Ryzen chips. They may be a little bit more expensive and especially uh, as the newer Ryzen chips are launched, these older Ryzen chips will come down in price even further. Uh, so this could be a really good time to pick up a really great uh, value chip. But of course, 
we'll see at least slight if not drastic improvements depending on how well AMD do at their uh, kind of upgrade game uh, with the newer chips so just bear that one in mind if you are planning on building this now that that may come out in the relatively near future. So with all of that out of the way let's get started on building. The first thing we're going to do is put the CPU in the socket which is a very simple procedure just lift up the socket arm place the CPU down into it and then push the arm back down this is a really simple zero insertion force procedure so that's really nice and easy. The next thing you want to do is install the CPU cooler now the motherboard should have a backplate pre-attached and in this case uh, I've already removed the uh, sort of mounting brackets that uh, the standard uh, kind of clip-on coolers go uh, use so just take those two plastic brackets off and then take your uh, Wraith Spire cooler uh, it should have thermal paste pre-applied if not apply your own thermal paste and then just push it down connect the fan header and screw in in a star pattern the four uh, screws that are built into the cooler and that's pretty much it installing the ram is also nice and simple and is the next thing we're going to do that's just align the notch in the center and for this case you're going to be using the slot uh, furthest away from the cpu and second furthest or i suppose third furthest um, so that you uh, run it in dual channel mode in the correct sort of orientation and all you do is just make sure the tabs are uh, kind of pushed out to the sides and then push the ram dim in evenly on either side and uh, kind of push it down until it clicks in and that's pretty much it. So next up we're going to be installing the power supply into the case and for this one we're using the Super Flare 550 watt LEDX unit although I personally recommend uh, the ones that are in the uh, description which are a little bit on the cheaper side uh, as opposed to this one just because this one is fully modular which is awesome uh, and feel free to grab a fully modular or even a semi modular if you fancy but in terms of the best price to performance uh, the ones that are linked in the description will be a little bit of a better value. Installing the power supply in the case is really simple all you do is take the power supply out and uh, remove the rear side panel place the power supply in from the back and screw it in with the four included screws with the case and then attach all the cables you'll need I personally recommend pre-routing some of the cables stuff like the 8 pin for the CPU header up top and the 24 pin around the side so that you can more easily attach them to the motherboard and once we install the motherboard nothing can get in our way after that we're going to install the SSD and the hard drive into the hard drive cages in the bottom of the case this is fairly simple I'm pretty sure this one is a toolless so you just attach it to uh, attach the drive to the drive bay and then slide it in uh, make sure it's the right orientation so we can connect our SATA data and SATA power cable cables in a second and then I think the SSD you will need to screw that into the uh, sort of drive drive slide but otherwise then just slide that into the cage again in the right orientation and then plug in the SATA power cables from our power supply and the two SATA data cables that will be in your motherboard box to the now uh, next to be installed motherboard and as I said installing the motherboard is the next thing so we're going to remove the tempered glass side panel make sure that the motherboard standoffs are in the right place check with your case and motherboard manuals to make sure that you're installing the standoffs in the right uh, position for your motherboard but for this one it's fairly simple and these are all already installed in the case so we're just going to align the uh, or actually throw in the IO shield first because everyone always forgets that including me uh, and then we're going to align the motherboard with the IO shield in the back and the nine standoffs uh, place it in and attach the nine screws uh, three on the top three in the middle and three on the bottom to secure the motherboard. Once the motherboard's in we can then connect up the eight pin power connector up at the top left the 24 pin in the middle right uh, we can also to connect those SATA data cables to the SATA ports on the right hand side sort of bottom end of the board and we can connect all of our front panel headers which you'll check your motherboard manual to see where they connect they're all labeled on the side of them and also stuff like your front panel audio and any front panel USB ports you have as well. Next up we'll be removing your rear PCIe covers for your top X16 slot that's in this case the extra shiny one at the top uh, and we will uh, just remove two for the graphics card. Make sure that your graphics card has all of the uh, sort of normally black or sometimes colored uh, plastic plugs for the rear IO and the PCIe uh, slot. Make sure those are removed so you can install the graphics card and then place the graphics card in making sure that it locks with the little tab at the back and then otherwise screw it into the uh, back panel where you remove those PCIe brackets and then plug in the PCIe power connectors to the back of the graphics card from your power supply. You will also want to hook up any of the included case fans or any extra fans that you want to add to the system. Make sure that they are all plugged in and powered and otherwise that is pretty much it. We have our system built. Now to install Windows and do some benchmarks. And now a couple days later with a slightly different t-shirt and I now built PC next to me. 
But let's take a look at the benchmark results. So I just want to mention that all of these results are actually a little bit lower than I expected them to be and so I just recommend you take these results with a bit of a pinch of salt especially if you're planning on building this specific configuration. With that said though both the 3D Mark and the Dirt Rally scores are pretty respectable with 84, 69 and 39 FPS respectively for 1080p, 40p and 4k with GTA 5 coming in 105, 79 and 44 FPS on very high settings again respectively for the resolution. Otherwise, taking a look at Unigen Heaven, again we're looking at pretty decent results, so 89, 53 and 23 as well, which is pretty decent for Unigen Heaven and certainly nothing to scoff at, so yeah, overall decent, but lower than I expected, so just bear that one in mind. So as you can see, this system is perfectly capable of running 1080p, 1440p and to an extent 4K games. Now it's certainly not a 4K, you know, monster, but if you're running at 1080p and 4040p, you'll be pretty happy with this system. All of those benchmarks are other on very high or ultra settings so just bear that one in mind as this is still a pretty powerful system and of course depending on what uh, spec you end up with depending on RAM and GPU configurations you'll likely see slightly different uh, performance better and worse in different scenarios so uh, it's fairly similar with a 1060 to an RX 580 just depends on what game you're looking at but either way this is still a very impressive system and while the price right now for stuff like graphics cards and RAM are certainly uh, kind of annoying uh, as a, a enthusiast PC gamer, uh, it's certainly still an option if you do want to build a system yourself. And this is the sort of spec that I generally recommend, even if not specifically this exact build. But that's enough for me. I'd love to hear you in the comments down below if you've got any thoughts on this system. And also, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the GPU and DRAM price hike at the moment and how it's sort of affecting you yourself. Otherwise, if you are planning on building a new system, feel free to let us know in the comments down below what sort of budget you're after and what sort of uh, kind of use case you're going for and any preferences you may have and hopefully we as a sort of community can help you out and uh, kind of give you some ideas of what parts you should be looking for when or where you should be picking them up from all that sort of stuff and kind of help you uh, get the most for your money otherwise that is pretty much it thank you to you for watching this video and if you want to support the channel feel free to take a look at the patreon link in the description down below if you want to check out any of the parts that are used in this system all the alter alternatives that I have here. There will be some links in the description down below for you. And otherwise, that is pretty much it. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button if you're still here. And otherwise, there will be some other videos over here for you to check out too. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And we'll see you all in the next video.